Thank you, Father. Praise you, my King. Praise you. Spirit of repentance. Spirit of repentance. Guys, you can't, you can't outclass God. You can't double clutch him. You can't blow smoke in his face. You can't hide anything from God. A repentant heart is a heart that says, Father, A heart of repentance. So when, when I was here and, and it was like I was lost or stumbling, I wasn't lost and stumbling. I was allowing the Holy Spirit time to orchestrate what He wanted to do in each of your lives. And do you realize that? Delayed obedience is the same thing as disobedience. Delayed obedience is the same as disobedience. If, if the Lord tells you to, to, to go over and witness to somebody, and you're like, okay, I will, but later. What if they walk outside and get run over by a truck? Just saying. That's delayed obedience. I'll do it later, Lord. I'll do it later. Be quick to do what the Spirit of God tells you to do. Be quick to repent. Be quick to ask somebody to forgive you. Ooh, that's a hard one. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I think Shiloh or Jeffrey or somebody's going to take the kids on the other side when there's supervision there. When there's supervision. Oh, damn. Well, when there's. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Look. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Dev. Thank you. I didn't know you was waiting on me. So, kids, there's a neat little activity on the other side of the wall that, that Pastor Shiloh and, and Jeffrey and everybody worked on. I love you kids. You can go. It's okay. It's okay. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, turn with me. I'm going to try to make this as painless as I can. Give me just a second. Everybody okay? Everybody good? Everybody all good? good? Praise God. You know, I was, the last couple days, 
I've been thinking a lot about Give Real Ministries and the direction we're going and, and what God is doing in this ministry and what God is doing and what we see God doing on an ongoing basis in the lives of the people here. You guys may not see it, you may not acknowledge it, you may not know it or whatever, but wow, the growth that we see in you guys, spiritual growth. I'm telling you, on this side, it's amazing to see what God's doing. Amazing to see what God's doing in people's lives. Um, Shiloh talks about the sneeze. Uh, she talks about she saw where it appeared as though God had sneezed. And she's like, and that don't make any sense. Sneeze makes people sick. And I said, no, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. God sneezed from get real. And when he sneezed, that anointing went in so many different places. Because of the people of get real, because we're hungry. We want to see the manifestation of God's Holy Spirit working in our lives and the lives of other people. We're not selfish, okay? We desire to see the will of God done in other people's lives. I mean, think about it, guys. Think about all the outreaches that we do. What is the reason and the purpose for that? So we can work our butts off till wee hours of the morning? No, not at all. So that we can reap souls for the kingdom so that Jesus can be glorified. You know, guys, when we do these events, I'm, I'm not, I, I do this anyway. I'm the first one up and the last one to leave. The next day, I'm good. I'm like, yeah, I'm pumped. I'm energized. I see what God is doing in the lives of people. And that's, that's, that's what, seeing his will done is what motivates me. It's what keeps me coming back. That's what keeps me studying his word. That's what keeps me loving on you guys, is seeing what God is doing. Amen? Amen. Now, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Let me get you air turned around here. Is that okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Now something that I thought about too. Let me make sure I get this too before I get in trouble. <laughs> it's even washed. I did it. Hey! Don't tell Shiloh I washed dishes but I did. But, but as this ministry does what it does It's like, the, it's like the Holy Spirit showed me that, see, there's a whole new group, a whole new crew of people have moved in to the apartments and different people running around. And so there's always a new body or a new group of people uh, for us to minister to, okay? People come into this ministry. They get born again. They get healed, delivered, set free, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then they go on. Well, as a pastor, that bothers me, or it did in the beginning. It bothered me. It's like, what am I? You know, I mean, I beat myself up nonstop. Where's everybody at? Why aren't they staying? Why are they leaving? Why are they somewhere else? And then when Shiloh had that vision of the sneeze, I said, yeah, they're infected with the desire to see the will of God all the way from South Africa to Florida to California to, to Texas. I mean, people that, and, and JJ's in Joplin. I mean, people just leaving this ministry and still, still talking about Jesus, still preaching Jesus. And that's what it's all about. But the Holy Spirit showed me something, and it's going to sound kind of ugly, and I'm going to try to keep it as, as unugly as I can, okay? But he pointed out to me that The enemy has tried and tried and tried and tried to bring a spirit of division into this ministry. And any of you that's been there any length of time at all, you know good and well that's, that's true. He's, he's hit us from every way, every direction, every level that he possibly can, or I think every level he possibly can. But he's tried to bring division in this ministry. Now what the Holy Spirit revealed to me, and I could be wrong, let me say what I believe the Holy Spirit revealed to me, and I could be wrong, is the fact that what he has done actually is taken those people, I love them, not, not bashing them, please understand, not bashing anybody, but he's taken those people that cannot hook up with the vision of Get Real Ministries, not all of them, 
but he's removed those people out of this city. Is that a bad thing? No, it's not a bad thing. Is it a good thing? It can be, so long as they purpose in their heart to continue to grow wherever it is that they're at now. But what the Holy Spirit showed me was, was I'm removing some, some, oh gosh, I don't want it to sound that way. Because I, I don't want anybody to think I'm glad they're gone. You know what I mean? I don't want anybody to think I'm glad anybody's gone because I'm not. But we pray this prayer constantly at this church. God, we only want the people here that you want here, right? And if you don't want them here, Lord, send them to wherever it is they're supposed to be. Then you look around, you see just a few of us here tonight. And in a sense, in the natural, it frustrates the far out of me. But in the spirit, I can see what God's doing. He's got to have a solid foundation here at Get Real Ministries. He's got to have a solid foundation. He's got to have warriors that have been through the battle. He's got, he has to have warriors that have fought the fight, not just once and barely skated by by the skin of your teeth, but I'm talking about battle-worn warriors in this ministry. And guys, I know a lot of you, and I know a lot of the stuff that you've gone through, and you're still here. You're still coming back. You're still lifting your hands. You're still loving Jesus, still worshiping Jesus. You're not gone anywhere. You're not going anywhere. I, I pray you don't unless it's God's will, and then I pray that you get there quickly. If you're supposed to be here, dig in and, and let your roots grow deep. If you're not supposed to be here, get up and hug our neck and shake our hands and hit the road and go where it is that you believe God has called you to be. Now, am I trying to run you all off tonight? Absolutely not. Just the opposite. I'm trying to let you know that, that we desire that God's will be accomplished in this ministry. We want it accomplished with you. And like I say, you've gone through some battles. But let me show you, let me show you a place. I'm just going to read a little bit. Is that okay if I just read um, 1 Corinthians starting with chapter 3? And I, brethren, cannot speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. That's evidently, you know, you guys are, you, it's this, tonight's message is going to be like preaching to the choir, okay? So, so take this, let it come into your spirit, let it go deep into your spirit, and when you walk out of here, walk out of here knowing what the Word of God says. Watch, we're going to go somewhere, watch this. And I, brethren, cannot speak to you as, as to spiritual people, but as to carnal as to the babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it, and even now you are still not able. And guys, I, I please understand I'm not bashing the people that left. The point is, they weren't, they weren't the ones to hook up with the vision. They weren't the ones to fight the fight and, and, and ride this roller coaster ride that, that Get Real is on. And, and we're going to continue. We're going to hit bumps and snags, and we might even run off the tracks a couple times, you know. But it's, it's the nature of the business and the nature of the location in which we are. We don't, we don't war against flesh and blood but against spirits and principalities and, and, and wicked hosts in heavenly places. The battles that we're battling is against the enemy. It's against Satan and his, his enemy, right? But he uses people. And people are willing to be used of him. Now watch this. For you're still carnal. For where there is envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? For when one says, I'm of Paul, and another, I'm of Apollos, are you not carnal? Who then is Paul, who is Apollos, but ministers through whom you believe as the Lord gave to each one? I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Now watch this, guys, watch this. Part of the problem, part of the problem with some people not being able to settle in here so with some folks not being able to, to, to accept the fact that God called them here and they bucked the system the whole time is they're in pride. If I don't have a place with a position, if I don't have a place with a title, if I can't be a somebody, I'm out of here. Okay. Love you. Okay. I planted Apollos water, but it's God that gives the increase. Guys, it really doesn't matter if you have a, a name tag on, on you or not. It doesn't really matter. What really matters is, is that we share the gospel, the good news of Christ Jesus. It's that we work together and we work collectively. 
some sow, some water. I don't know if I sowed seed today or I don't know if I watered seed today. But I do know this, that it's God is the one that's going to give the increase. So if I start thinking myself as high-minded, I'm in the wrong. It's not about me. It's about us coming together as the body of Christ and doing what God has called us to do. So then neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers. Hello? We are God's fellow workers, guys. The divisions and the dissensions in the churches should never be. But I'm going to point out three things here in just a minute to show you what causes them. What allows them, what the enemy uses, causes them to come in. For we are God's fellow workers, and you are God's, you are, uh, God's field. You are God's building. According to the grace of God, which was given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another builds on it. But let each one, uh, but let each one take heed how he builds on it. What is it? The foundation of Christ Jesus. The foundation that was laid in the beginning. Is what the Apostle Paul is talking about. Building on the foundation. It's very important what Get Real Ministries is building on. It's very important that, that we build on the Word of God. And it's very important that the people of Get Real Ministries continue to build on that same uh, footing, that same platform. I've seen it, I've seen it, I've seen it. And, and I'll, I'll use Billy Joe Doherty as an example. Uh, Victory Christian Center in, in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Billy's passed on now. Uh, but for years and years and years, we went down there. And what he would do, the message that he ministered would be on the back of the handout that day. And they had home Bible studies, home Bible study groups. And the direction to every one of his home leaders was this. You'll teach from these notes and these notes alone. Now, when I first heard that, I thought, that's kind of controlling, isn't it? And then I watched and I listened and I was still growing in, in my, in trying to mature in the things of God. There were people teaching some of the most off-the-wall stuff in their home Bible study groups that they had, he had to give them guidelines to follow so that they could do what the Word of God says right here to make sure you build on this foundation. Not with wood and hay and stubble. Not with the things of this world. Not, not, not building on, on your own will and your, and your own desires, but building, building on the will of God, on the foundation of Christ Jesus, Him crucified and resurrected. Amen? Amen. Amen. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay or straw, each one's work, here we come, each one's work will become clear. For the day <laughs> will declare it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test each one's work of what sort that it is. If anyone's work which, is, which he has built on uh, endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved yet as through fire. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Let no one deceive himself in any one among, among you who seems to be wise. In this age, let him become a fool that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world, in other words, guys, our own best laid plans, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he catches the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are futile. Therefore, let no one boast in men. For all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come. All are yours and you are Christ and Christ is God's. Now watch this, guys. Let me see if I can break this. Let me see if I can do this as quickly as I can, as efficient, uh, efficiently as I can. One of the issues that, that he raised is division in the church. He says that they are worldly. 
and unspiritual. In some ways, they're the most spiritual of all the churches, talking about the Corinthians, that Paul wrote to. They did not lack any spiritual gift. Now watch this. However, they were unspiritual because of bad attitudes, which led to division. Bad attitudes. Bad attitudes. Guys, I don't know why the Holy Spirit is leading me to teach on this. Like I said, you guys are the choir. You're the faithful. You're the ones that are here. But I guess maybe perhaps you need to know that, that what does go on behind the scenes, what does go on when you, when you think that everybody's holy and happy and, and everything's rocking just the way, well, that's not necessarily so. That's not the way it is. You get this many different people, this many different personalities, and there's going to be clashes. It's going to happen. It's my responsibility to know when those things are taking place that I can step in with love and I'm working on my love walk. I really am. I really am. I'm trying to be a kinder, gentler kind of rando. You know what I mean? But sometimes it just, you know, sometimes. Now watch this. The Apostle Paul points out three different things. Oh, no. Jealousy is number one. He writes, for since there is jealousy among you, are you not worldly? It's tempting, now watch this, to compare ourselves with others. Who's got the name badge? Who doesn't have the name badge? Who's the coffee king? Who's the pastor? Who's the... I don't know if you guys ever noticed or not, when I do put the name badge on, all it says is rando. That's all it says. It doesn't say, I'm senior pastor, and y'all should shake my hand, and not at all. I just happen to be the shepherd. Now look at this. Talk about a servant's heart. <laughs> Thank you. I just happen to be the pastor. I just happen to be the one that God placed in this place to do what it is I'm doing. And guys, if it was easy, oh, hallelujah. <laughs> anyway, we're moving right along. Uh, um, to compare ourselves with others, when we hear about some blessing other than uh, that someone else has, has received, oh, don't we start thinking, well, when's that going to happen to me? Oh, how come I don't receive that kind of blessing? Well, how come they got a new car and I didn't? We should rejoice in somebody else's good fortune. We should speak blessings over somebody when they get something nice and something new. We should be happy for them instead of being jealous. Because if we allow jealousy to come in, there's a, there's a division place. There's a crack where that jealousy can start working and start causing division and start separating. You know the worst thing in the world that can happen is for somebody to be offended in church and stomp out here and I'm never going back to that place. To me, you're a hypocrite. Because you got ran out of every bar in town, but you kept going back. I know because I saw you. I was there. I got kicked out of bar after bar after bar, and I'd come back night after night after night. I'd get into a fight with somebody there, I'd be back the next night. But yet you get your feelings hurt in church, and you stomp out the door, and you say, those hypocrites, I'm never going back to that place again. Really? Why is that? Are you jealous of something that, that happened in their lives? Are you jealous of their spouse? Are you jealous of the way their kids are acting? Or, I mean, what is it? I don't know. But I can tell you this, jealousy is, no, is one of the number one causes for division in the church. Here at Gabriel Ministries, I, as far as I'm concerned, we're all equal. Amen. From the badge that says Rando to the one that says Shiloh. We do have one that says Coffee King. That's kind of elevating some, you know, but that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to have Burger King next for Jesus Burger. <laughs> we must not envy anyone else's appearance, possessions, education, social standing, material status, gifts, talents, job, or anything else because that will only hinder our own blessings. Amen. Don't be jealous of what somebody else has, guys. Rejoice in the fact that they got it. Praise God. Boasting is another thing. Boasting is another thing that can cause division in a church. Boasting, watch this. Paul writes, so 
Paul writes, so then, no more boasting about human leaders. In other words, don't say, well, pastor so-and-so is in, and choir leader so-and-so, and Sunday school teacher so-and-so, and, and me too. What about me? Mm. Boasting is the temptation to compare ourselves with others. Uh, we think we're doing rather well and we boast about our success. We need to see our part in God's economy in its proper perspective. We're first just human. Number one, we're just people. We're just a bag of dirt with clothes on. I know some of you ladies looking at me like, how dare you? But it's true. We're just a sack of dirt. We're first and foremost, we're just people. We're just human. <laughs> <laughs> Second, we're only servants. Third, neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything. Remember, we read that. Therefore, there is no cause for boasting because it's God that gives the increase. It's God, you know what? The Bible talks about how your giving will make your way before kings. How that as you sow and as you give, that God will open up doors and open up places. You guys, I'm not boasting. I'm using this as an example. When I was working at the research center, of course, I, 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 I I gave, I gave, I sowed, I gave, I, outside, I, you know, and I read that scripture one day, and it wasn't but two or three days later, and I was in the executive vice president, or what, the, the head, the headest head there was out there working in his office for several days that week, to the point to where he got to know me by my first name. That could either be good, or that could be either bad, you know? When, when the number one person over the entire facility knows you by name, but it was God's favor. And I thought about that verse, that, that your giving will, will make your way before kings. He's not a king, but uh, he had the scepter out there. He, he could put you on down the road. But just keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. You give whatever it is that you can give. You sow whatever it is that you can sow, but you do it, you do it with a joyful heart. You don't do it boasting. You don't do it prideful. It, and, and how many times have you heard me say, if all you have is some change in your hand for offering, knock the bottom out of that bucket. Rattle that bucket. Don't be ashamed of what you've got because whatsoever man sows, that he's also going to reap. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> Boasting and there's quarreling. Paul writes that their quarreling is another reason that he sees them as unspiritual. We must avoid taking sides... For one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos. We must avoid taking sides. We must avoid taking sides. And guys, I'm telling you, with everything I am, I have purposed in my heart, the next time I hear somebody say something about, well, you know, sister so-and-so, I'm going to stop him. I'm going to say, wait just a minute. You have her phone number? Call her. Let's, let's get her in on this conversation first. I, I'm done with it. I'm done with he said, she said, they said. Who are they anyway? Who are they? I'm done with it. If what we have to say doesn't edify the hearer, if what we have to say doesn't give glory to the name of Jesus, if what we have to say doesn't build the kingdom, I don't want to hear it. There's things I have to hear. There's things that I have to address. But I can assure you this, if it's dealing with somebody... From this moment forward, that somebody's either going to be on the phone or going to be sitting right beside us before we talk about whatever that is that we're talking about that person about. I'm done with it. I can't afford this. I can't. I can't afford to let somebody get hurt because somebody else was in pride or somebody else was jealous or somebody else was boasting or, or whatever it may be. I can't do it. I'm not going to run around putting out everybody's little, little, little fires. You know, that's not what I'm saying, but I will stop the division. When it raises its head, I'll say, wait, mm, hey, what are you doing right now? Okay, well, let me put you on the speakerphone. I got, I got Sister Hoopendiddle right here with me, and she's got something she wants to say. And we'll see if Sister Hoopendiddle still wants to stand beside her words or not. You know what I mean? Yeah. Guys, we got to do that. Riley and Chase. Woo, them boys in trouble. 
Hmm. All of these stem from an inflated view of our own importance. These are unspiritual attitudes, and these sorts of attitudes are too common in fallen humanity, infecting the world and sadly infecting the church too. Guys, I know, once again, I, I, I know that this is the choir. I know who it is that I'm teaching or talking to. I, I understand this. Just please go with me in the understanding that the Holy Spirit had me to bring this message out tonight for a reason, for a purpose. And that reason and that purpose is, is we're going down deeper. We've got to go down deeper in Christ Jesus for our foundation, for our footing. You know, I, I've worked construction for most of my life, and, and I've seen these big drill machines, huge big bore machines, bore way down into the earth, into the bedrock, and then the, then the, the steam hammer cranes driving pylons on down deeper, and then they fill it full of cotton. That's what we're doing, guys. That's what we're doing. But we're going to make sure that all of our equipment is up and running. We're going to make sure that there's no misses in our equipment, okay? And what I mean by misses, I'm talking about foolish arguments. I'm talking about pride. I'm talking about deceit. I'm talking about backbiting. Not going to happen, but I cannot do it on my own. Help me help you help me. Does that make any sense? Help me help you help me. Anyway, you can figure that one out. <laughs> I hope you know what I mean. But anyway, I love you guys. This isn't a chastening, not for me anyway. This is just something that, that, that I wish that this place would have had 500 people in to hear all this. You know what I mean? But it's us that was here tonight, and, and I just try to follow the leading of God's Holy Spirit. So please understand, I love each and every one of you, and each and every one of you are so, I mean, you, <laughs> I, I can't begin to tell you how important you are to my life. And it breaks my heart every time somebody leaves, but at the same time, is it because of one of those reasons? Or is it because they were disobedient to God? Or is it because they were called somewhere else? That's between them and God to figure out, not me. Every person that ever walked out of this door or stomped out of this door, I'll hug their neck right now. If I open that door, I'll hug their neck. I'll give them my cup of coffee. I didn't even drink it yet. I'm not mad. I don't have the sin. I don't have, I, I, I don't have room. I don't have time for that. We've got kingdom business to address. We can't let the things of this world distract us and pull us down. We cannot afford to do that. Our future is at stake. Stand your, stand your feet with me, would you please? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love you, my Jesus. I love you. Father, I love you and I praise you. And Lord God, this word, may this word come to me point blank like a sawdust shotgun right in my face, Lord God. That, Father, I will study your word and I will see where in your word that if I'm prideful and boastful and, and, and arrogant of those things, forgive me, Father, but point it out to me because all the glory goes to you, Father. Father, it's not about Rando. It's not about Shiloh. It's about furthering the kingdom of God. So, Father God, I pray right now that every one of us within this building tonight have a supernatural desire to go deeper and deeper in you so that foundation be solid, Lord God. And Father, as the people walk in off the streets, we have something to give them, and that something is called love. I love you, Jesus, and I love the people here tonight. I ask that you would bless them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Shiloh's got some announcements. I got announcements, but I was real
in the letters that go out in, in, in the act, book of Acts, it says, please greet my brother Timothy. He's one from me, and I'm sending him to you. Well, they greeted us just like that, not knowing us, like we were just family. That's how we want down the street everybody to realize what Get Real is like. So if we boast about, well, Get Real did this, Get Real, you know, and I think that's kind of, I, the way I feel, it kind of went there for a minute that way. And it wasn't giving God the glory. People started resenting Get Real. Um, and it's not that we meant to, but we weren't careful with our words. Let me show you how, <clears throat> how I was greeted when we were in, in Texas this past weekend. <laughs> I met this man one time, briefly, for one time. I don't know how tall he is. He'll be here, six two maybe or something. Say they draw um, Yeah, and he works out. You can tell he's he's buff, you know. And he come walking up to him. He down. He come walking up to him. He goes, he goes, oh, Randall, you're beautiful, man. Oh, I love you. And I thought, good boy. <laughs> but he meant it. He was. Genuine. I mean, he's crying in his he's face. Genuine. And I'm looking. I'm like, oh, you're so. <laughs> I didn't know which way it was going to go. <laughs> but I know both of them. I know the, uh, the guy's heart. I know who he is. His true love. When you talk about agape love, that is that. And that's where we learn. We have to step up in that level. Um, I'm not saying go up to everybody. And, you, know, you, know, you, have to work your, you might have to work yourself up to them to know you. If you go where you're at today, up to other people, you know, they might go, whoa. You know, let them know you and God love first before you walk up to them. But that is God love. It says in there, greet every woman with a kiss. This man is so much in that word of God of that, that if he would have, did he? No. <laughs> if he would have, <laughs> if he would have, because I didn't know, if he would have kissed him on the cheek, because it was so anointed and it was a guy in the crying, even though his body was like, oh, you know, he couldn't have moved. That's how much love was there. Listen, guys, we're not, we're not lifting these people up. Uh, we, no, we, but that's we, the love we want to We read that tonight, but I'm telling you guys, we've got to go down deep. We've got to go down deep. And we know 1 Corinthians 13 is a love chapter. You can have all this glory and all this pretty sparkles, all of it you want, but if you don't have love, you got to have something. Just like Jesus Burger. It's not Jesus Burger. And that's what we're doing about, you know, the, the division or the attempt of division in the church. It's not going to happen. Not through pride, not through arrogance, not through boasting. None of that stuff. Amen. Amen. Okay. okay, so um, we've got a couple of announcements real quick. Real quick. Flags. Is it Saturday? Yeah. Huh? Oh, my, like, oh, Sorry, guys. <laughs> Woo! <-hoo>. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> okay. Woo, there she is. Okay. Okay, youth is on hold. We've got a youth. Uh, youth is on hold. We're restructuring, restructuring the youth. Um, men's being... Every, well, not this Monday, but the following Monday. We just had one. Uh, 23rd. Whack is this Saturday, yes. Whack. Woo! So bring a friend, guys. Just, just bring a friend. Let them get some whack love. You know. All my friends are here. Yeah. We're getting ready to not be here. Not that female. If you're going to cook the pancakes, you We're going to have pancake breakfast for the women. <laughs> not Woo! this, not this whack. Not this whack. So um, that's at 930. Um, BBS, real quick. This is just we don't have much, we're still in the works of everything, but uh, 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th, it's, it's that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, there will not be one on that Friday, but we will need volunteers if you can, it's 6 p.m., so it's later in the evening, if you're going to volunteer, um, get with me and let me know, and once we have our meeting, we'll, we'll readjust it, heads up, huh, yeah, it'll be about two hours. It's the first week in August, 6th, 7th, 8th. And then March visitors come in um, that following Saturday. That's why we're going to be Friday. Okay, socks. If you've got any uh, socks, new socks that you want to donate to the uh, First Step Shoe Ministry, they are new socks too. They just bought 600 pairs of shoes. They've got 1,300 shoes. Six hundred pairs. <laughs> Six hundred pairs is twelve individuals. <laughs> so yes, if you have any, uh, like we grab a, a set for seven dollars, just twenty socks at the or three dollars for a pair of socks. Give them a dollar. Okay, love you guys. Uh, Amanda Graham, Amanda, Amanda.
congratulations on your new name and badge. Yes. God's favor, we see it time after time after time. We see jobs and better jobs and promotions. And come on, Jesus, Amen. Love you guys. Um, thank you. Oh, y'all see, y'all see the project they did. There's a watermelon back there. Well, there used to be a watermelon back there. Down and all the animals and stuff are gone. Used to be a watermelon back there that was Noah's Ark. Animals escaped. And they had animal crackers all in. It had. Rainbow twins <laughs> are licorice for the rainbow, and uh, anyway, anyway, thank you all. Love you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.